Hello, my friends. This is Linda Lippin, and welcome to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. Well, hello, my friends. It's Linda Lippin, your host for the Pilates Goddess Podcast, and welcome back. Today, we will continue our deep dive into the Pilates mat, and we're looking today at just four exercises, the spine stretch, the open leg rocker, the corkscrew, and the saw. Um, And interestingly enough, although these may look like different shapes and look like different exercises, they're relevantly similar, as always. Okay, so we get done with the app series, and we finish that last crisscross, and our abs are really sore. And we've been like, we've been on our backs, you know, for a little while, except for rolling like a ball. And now it's time to sit up. Now, when we sit up to go for the spine stretch in the Pilates mat, here are a few things that you want to think about. Okay. Sitting up with your legs out in front of you, even though they are out to the side, so they're at an angle, which is, you know, better than right in front, it's still going to be challenging for many people. Why? Because number one, even though we sit a lot, we tend not to be strong sitters, right? We tend to slouch in our chairs and we're usually sitting on chairs. So we're not kind of forcing that pelvic stability, that length in the hamstrings and, you know, that other work. So when people go to sit down, if they've got tight hamstrings, they're going to have a hard time. If they've got tight hip flexors, they're going to have a hard time. And for either of these people, either group, there are two easy ways to make sitting up like that a little bit better. Okay. The first one is take the legs a little bit wider than the mat. That is wider than your floor mat. Because if you were in a Pilates studio and you were on a raised Pilates mat, you would have the moon boxes on either side of your mat. And that is where your feet would go for spine stretch and saw. So you can go a little wider than your mat. The second thing that anyone can do that will make it a little easier and a little more doable is to sit up on something. Whether you're sitting on a yoga block, on one of those moon boxes, roll up a towel, sit on a, if you have a phone book, (laughs) or just a large book, hardcover, you know, um, use that. Pillows don't really work because they're too soft, okay? So you want something, you know, it might have a little give, but you want it to be pretty solid. And that elevation reduces the amount of hip flexion that you're in and will make it a little more comfortable to sit up. So for the spine stretch, once you're sitting up, you're really looking at lifting up your whole spine, like literally your whole spine, grounding down into your sits bones and into your legs, and then lifting up your spine, lifting up your lower back, lifting up your breastbone, lifting up through your head. I even often have my clients just lift their arms up to the ceiling so that their whole spine is lifted and strong. And then it's about the spine stretch. Remember, it's not a hamstring stretch exercise. It's a spine stretch exercise. So you're sitting up super tall. You start to round your spine going forward. You're dropping your head in between your arms. You're staying in a deep C curve. And and when you're in this spine stretch, the idea is to be going into a really full spinal flexion from the top. So we're kind of repeating what we did in the roll-up, right? except now we're doing it seated. For your flexion intolerant clients, you can just have them keep their spine lifted and their chest opened and they can do a hinge stretch forward. Okay. Not quite the same as a spine stretch, but it will still give them some movement, be difficult or challenging and, you know, get them breathing and sitting tall. 
the object of this game is to be sitting up tall. So way after stretching forward, then we're inhaling and we're lifting all the way back up our spines to our heads. And then we repeat that a few times. Ideally, the feet are dorsal flex. So you're pulling your whole foot, all of your toes, including your pinky toes back towards your torso. From there, we go into open leg rocker. Now, open leg rocker, I love. So think about that position of the spine stretch. And the spine stretch is an exercise that, you know, when you look at it, you should be thinking about your push throughs. You should be thinking about any exercise where you're sitting and going into flexion and then spine extension. There are tons of them. Um, you can think about your short box, about your work on the barrels, about your rollbacks. There's all kinds of exercises, right, that go along with this, as well as the fact that the spine stretch itself shows up on the Wonder Chair and in other places. Now, the open leg rocker, you're maintaining that kind of round shape of the spine stretch. You're balancing on your sacrum. Your spine is in full flexion. Legs are straight. Hands are at the back of your legs. And then you roll. You inhale back. You exhale up. Now, flexion intolerant people can do the balance up at the top. You can play with opening and closing the legs, bending and straightening the knees, all kinds of things. But flexion intolerant folks, osteoporosis, varying disc herniations, things like that don't need to be rolling on their back in that position. But for healthy spines, again, they can. The best ways to modify for this, because you will often find that people will fall back, bring their legs closer to their bodies, and then get stuck like a turtle and not be able to get back up, is I always remind people that you need to keep your legs straight and you need to keep the pressure of your legs into your hands. So your elbows aren't bending, you're maintaining that position. Which means that as you go back towards your shoulder blades, your legs lift up more than go back. Okay? This open leg rocker is a good precursor for things like horseback on the reformer and the high barrel and the chair. Okay? There's lots of exercises, including spine stretch, (laughs) where the open leg rocker will come in handy. Now, from the open leg rocker, which again is kind of fun, we come right back onto our backs for corkscrew. Corkscrew starts as a small exercise where you're basically having both legs up to the ceiling and you're just doing a circle around the pelvis, right? You're going back to the belly button a little, right hip tail, left hip back to the belly button, and then reversing it, keeping the legs together. In its full form, this exercise goes up into a shoulder stand, kind of like the rollover, and then you're rolling down one side of your back, coming around the pelvis and rolling up the other side of your back to the center and then the other way. Whatever version that you're doing, just remember that it's all an expansion of this circling around the pelvis. So if people need to keep their legs down or knees bent or whatever and get that circle around the pelvis, that's what you do, okay? If you're working with folks on doing the bigger version, you can, again, just like for the roll over, if you're on a studio mat, you can use those dowels at the top. And then you sit right up to get the rotation in the upper body in saw. So we're back in the spine stretch position. The arms are now out to the side. The spine is lifted. We've done a lot of work in rotation so far. And now we're going to rotate to the right as you inhale. And as you exhale, your left pinky finger goes past your right pinky toe. As your right arm opens back behind you and lifts up a little bit so your chest is open. You make sure that the left half of the pelvis is down. That left hip is on the ground. You're lifted, you're long, and then you come back into the center and do the other side. Again, for the flexion intolerant, you can just do the rotation here and you can even do a rotation with the hinge. 
People with shoulder issues can keep an elbow bent, especially the one going back behind them, which might make it a little bit easier for them to deal with. The saw prepares the body for all kinds of rotations, including the spine twist, which might seem simpler and comes later, but it's actually harder because the legs are straight out in front of you and you're moving a little bit faster. So these exercises are really key. They really are. This is where we're learning to sit with straight legs. This is where we're learning to lift the spine. This is where we're learning to rotate from the top as well as from the bottom. Okay. These skills are important, right? Stabilizing first lower body, moving upper body in a seated position, then stabilizing upper and lower as we round the spine in flexion and just get some good rolling in, then fixing the upper body as we do some rotation lower body, and then fixing lower body as we rotate the upper body. Do you see see how the pattern works and actually works well? Okay. Okay. And as we know, this is now preparing us. Why are we sitting? Why are we rotating and sitting and doing things here? Because next we're going to come onto our stomachs and really move into more of a hyperextension of the spine, both upper and lower. Okay, so we've had to do all of this work in lengthening, all of this work in flexion, which is usually a little bit easier for folks than extension. This work in sitting, this work in rotating, this work on getting the abdominals, you know, moving with us. And that is then going to prepare us to move into working in hyperextension and being even more aware of what our back body is doing. Matt is really the core of the work, okay? This saw shows up in any rotation exercise that you're doing anywhere, okay? Think about your short box. Think about your chair. Think about your barrels, right? Think about your um, you're working on the Cadillac. There's versions of the saw there. There's versions of the side bend. There's versions of the rotation. You can do it with the push-through bar, Um And these are important exercises because these are important skills. Teaching people, especially people with back problems and neck issues, how to sit properly and use their front sides and backs to keep them upright and keep them breathing and keep them moving is a very, very important thing because, frankly, we all sit a lot. And like here in New York, you're sitting on the subway and then you're running up and down the stairs and then you're sitting again and then you're walking on the sidewalk and then you're maybe sitting again and then you're going to your Pilates class. So there's a lot of like up and down, sitting, standing, moving through stairs, ramps, you know, sidewalk things. And the Pilates mat prepares our bodies for those things. All right. As always, my friends, I know this was a shorter episode today, but hopefully you got what you needed from it and possibly you're getting, having some questions. So I would love it if you would ask me your questions. You can find me on social media, on all of the platforms at Linda Lippin or Linda Lippin Pilates. You can also email me, Linda at at lindalippin.com. You can leave me a voicemail or send me a message from my website at lindalippin.com or from pilatesgoddess.com on the episode page. Finally, what you can really do to help me out is if you love the podcast, please, please follow it, subscribe, rate it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that you're getting your podcasts. And if you can, leave a written review. 
It really helps me and it helps other people find the podcast. And I think this series in particular is so good for both Pilates instructors and for Pilates clients. And just so you know, when I get done with the mat, I'm going to take the same approach over to the reformer. Okay. So we're going to be getting a lot of gold in this season of the Pilates Goddess podcast. Thank you so, so much for listening as always. And I'll be back with you on Thursday. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Pilates Goddess podcast. Music brought to you by Nerd Salad. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, especially if you liked it. And please like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks.